bleed the first. American dream, I plead the first. White shirt, blue jeans, I bleed the first. American dream, I plead the first. White shirt, blue jeans, I bleed the first. All right. Hi, everybody. It's Monday. I hope you had a great weekend. Hope everybody's safe. I hope they had a good kickoff to their work week and everything's going well. Uh, we got a lot to talk about on Monday. I told you this weekend I would talk about the Coca-Cola training. Um, so I'm going to talk about it. I'm not going to lie, guys. I'm struggling with this episode. I've taken like 12, 13 takes at this point. Um, normally I don't do that. Normally I sit down. I do it in one or two takes. I just say whatever's on my mind. But this topic is so complex that it's easy to go off on uh go down a, down a rabbit hole and just lose yourself into a whole nother subject that uh isn't easily linked back to the original thought of this coca-cola training so i'm going to try to try to stay concise but at the same time i do want to talk about some of the background of why this stuff is happening so a little bit of a challenge here we go coca-cola confirms training employees Try to be less white. So what I'm not going to do is I'm not going to spend a whole bunch of time on here uh, being pissed off and explaining to you how this is racist. Anybody with half a brain can see that this is racist. Anybody with half a brain can see that this is a dumb idea. You can do the easy test of just taking that one word right there and replacing it with black, brown, red, yellow, uh, Native American, Irish, Mexican, whatever you, Cuban, you want to replace it with anything you want, and it automatically becomes a cringeworthy racist statement. Um, so why isn't it racist for, for these people? Why isn't it racist for white people? Well, um, that's by design. That's by design of the people that are pushing these narratives, that are pushing intersectionality. Uh, it's what they're trying to take over our country with and if we're not careful they're going to succeed so we're going to break that down a little bit like i said i'm not going to spend an overly long amount of time talking about the simple the simple stuff with this uh, you can see a million other videos out there that are going to say look at this this is the last slide of the training it says try to be less white this is ridiculous look yeah we all know that let's try to have a conversation about this that's meaningful and maybe we can all used to uh, fight against this kind of stuff. So here's the deal. Robin D'Angelo is the author of this training. She is unfortunately a best-selling author of the book. Uh, White, what is it called? Oh my gosh, it's something super stupid. Uh, let me see, Robin D'Angelo. White Fragility, yeah. I, I've read snippets of the book. I couldn't get all the way through it. Uh, it's there's outtakes in a lot of different articles and stuff like that. Um, just reading a couple paragraphs of the book will give you everything you need to know about Miss Robin D'Angelo. And yeah, I was looking for her net worth. I'm going to come back to that here in a second. I couldn't find it. It's she's hiding that and for, for good reason. I'm going to tell you why. Robin D'Angelo pretty much says in her book that all white people are just they're racist they're born racist by the time they're three years old they already have it in their head that being white is better than being any other color and that you should spend your entire life apologizing for being white that is the basis of her book so a couple problems with that robin d'angelo you're profiting off of that let's think about that for a moment she is a self-proclaimed racist she says so in her book that she has all these racist thoughts and that she apologizes to her co-workers on a regular basis and she's so excited when they forgive her for her transgressions. So how is it okay for you to go profit off of that then? Doesn't that make you even worse? And... Why is it that you think all white people are racist from the get-go? First of all, all people have some level of prejudices built into their mind. It's whether they act on these prejudices that matter. Okay? We all, every one of us, have some subconscious prejudice. Now, if that's what she's talking about, 
I don't have a problem agreeing with that, but it's not. That's not what she means. She says that we all hate black people from birth. Do you know how stupid that idea is? And she's a PhD worth millions of dollars because she wrote a shitty book. I've, I've tried to make this video so many times because I end up cussing. And I, guys, I'm just sorry. It is the way it is. You're going to have to deal with some cussing. Coca-Cola hires this lady. Actually, I, I don't want to misrepresent. That's not true. She, this lady put out some training and she put it on LinkedIn training. Coca-Cola then sends their employees to the LinkedIn training. And that's what Coca-Cola tried to do to disassociate themselves with the training without denouncing the crazy thoughts behind it. So this let's uh, let's get to this the statement by Coca-Cola. The video circulating on social media is from a publicly available linked LinkedIn learning series and is not a focus of our company's curriculum. So this is them trying to disassociate themselves and say, oh this that we didn't make that training that we, that's just on a place where we send people if they found it over there, I sorry, right? Our our better together global learning curriculum is part of a learning plan to help a uh, help build an inclusive workplace. It is comprised of a number of short vignettes, each a few minutes long. The training includes access to LinkedIn learning on a variety of topics, including diversity, equity, and inclusion. We will continue to refine this curriculum. So this is a really wishy-washy statement of they're trying to squirm out of both sides because they know if they come out and say, yeah, this training's stupid, that they're going to get hammered by the leftist. And if they don't come out and say anything, then they're going to get hammered by the right because we know that they did it. So this is their way, their try at getting out of it uh, from both sides with out with the least amount of damage it's not going to work they're going to piss off both sides is what they're going to do um when you look at the training i mean there's a bunch of videos out there you guys can go check out other videos too about this that and you can actually go to linkedin learning if you like and actually take the course if you want if you really want to see what they're teaching it's awful stuff um i couldn't go through it i just I, it's just it's makes me so mad that i can't really get through it uh, the Coca-Cola logo is on the training snapshots in the video tweet. So that pretty much says it all right there. The Coca-Cola is trying to disassociate themselves, but their logo is on the damn train. Okay. Uh, Candace Owens, love her. If you ha if you don't know who Candace Owens is, you need to get your life. Go out there. Go find her. Read, read the stuff she says. Watch her show on YouTube. And uh, for all you that keep saying that there's no conservative voices on YouTube or that I'm not going to last on YouTube, that's not true. There's a ton of conservatives on YouTube. Candace Owens is out there. Uh, the Hodge twins are out there. Ben Shapiro's out there. Uh, they, uh, Jordan Peterson is certainly a voice that the uh, conservatives like. Um, there's no... Uh, there's no shortage of nice uh, content for conservatives to listen to. And yeah, they censor people sometimes, but those guys are not getting censored or you'd be hearing about it. So I haven't had any problems yet, guys. I'll tell you if I do. So stay on topic here. Candace Owens, corporate company sent you around a training kit instructing black people to be less black. The world would implode and lawsuits would fall. Absolutely right. Kendall Jenner launched a tequila brand this week and faced immediate vicious backlash for culturally appropriating Mexicans. I honestly can't comprehend how stupid and unbearable American woke society is becoming. Yeah, it's she's 100% right. It's ridiculous. So this is a good article out there. It's on the street. You can check it out. Read all the stuff that you want to read, but i that's not what the focus of this video is. I'm going to really get down to this. Why is this this way? So we talked about Robin D'Angelo. We talked about, um, here's some of the slides of the training, guys, if you want to see that. People are all over this on Twitter. There is the left trying to cover this up. Be Less White Coca-Cola addresses backlash for employees training program confronting racism. 
what's funny about it is I think they recently updated the the headline for this because that was not the way the headline was well when I originally clicked on it the article actually said that um, this was refuted so they're they're changing their story pretty quick you can still catch them out there sometimes but here's the deal man where are you getting these kind of thoughts let's watch a quick video here this guy What's up, white people and the rest of you motherfuckers? I'm starting a trend. Look what I got. One, two. Oh, show them the bag. You gotta see the bag. You're counting the black people in your car to show how not racist you are? Hey, show them the bag. Show them the bag. Oh, cool, man. Cool. You bought the dude a $10 Burger King meal. Hashtag apology lunch. Hashtag Go find apology. yourself a black person and buy them some food. Hashtag apology lunch. Can you believe that? Can you believe that? Did you see how that dude thought he was the coolest, man? He thought, wow, look at me. I can't wait to post this and show everybody how cool and awesome and virtuous I am. I'm going to virtue signal. You moron, you window licking moron. How do people like this exist? Well, I'll tell you how. It all derives from postmodernism, which is absolutely insane because postmodern postmodernism ends up contradicting a lot of their own theories. I'm trying to hold it together here, guys. So we're gonna talk about postmodernism really quickly because postmodernism feeds into uh, intersectionality and all the other woke left crap. Postmodernism is an intellectual philosophy that basically claims there is no objective truth, okay? There is no objective truth, and to think that there is an objective truth is just uh, self-delusion, here, there is, there is an objective natural reality, a reality whose existence and pro, uh, properties are logical, logically independent of human beings. This is a fair statement. Of their minds, their societies, their social practices, and their investigative techniques. This is all true. Postmodernists dismiss this idea as a kind of naive realism. Such reality as there is, according to postmodernist, is a conceptual construct. So this is, there is no reality. Everything's subjective. An artifact of scientific practice and language. This point also applies to the investigation of past events by historians. This is key right here, guys. This is a key piece to the postmodernist theory. And this is why postmodernism is so dangerous. And to the description of social institutions, structures, or practices by social scientists. All right, so in woke leftist uh, modern theory, you the, the most obvious that you ever see uh, postmodernism is probably with the current gender fluidity stuff. Um, how they say sexuality is a spectrum and gender is a spectrum and there is no binary genders and it's everybody's non-binary and this that and other thing that's all based in postmodernism and it's linked to their intersectionality theory uh which is completely completely ridiculous because if you're going to make an argument that there is no such thing as truth which is exactly what postmodernists say, there is no truth, then there is no point in arguing about anything and there certainly is no point in saying that all white people are racist because you're a postmodernist, therefore you can absolutely not say that all white people are racist because there is everything subjective. If everything's subjective, then perhaps nobody's racist. Racism doesn't exist at all. Nothing exists. The world doesn't exist. It's all a freaking construct. 
of our own minds and language. These people are deranged. And when you get down into the building blocks of their philosophy, you find out how it was all built and you find out how deeply disturbed these people are. And you can also find out their real motives. And their real motive is revealed right here. This is Encyclopedia Britannica by, by, by the way. So just if anybody's trying to say that I'm pulling this from some right-wing uh, source, I'm not. It's, this is postmodernism defined by Britannica. I want to read this one more time. This point also applies to the investigation of past events by history, by historians. So basically what they're saying there, postmodernists are saying, history is subjective. If you've ever re read the book, and I've mentioned it multiple times on here already in the last couple of weeks, because things are just trending in such a way that the book becomes more and more relevant. The book 1984 mentions, it has a quote in there. I'm going to, I'll probably butcher it. So just bear with me. It says, he who controls the past controls the future. And he who controls the future, no, he who controls the present controls the past. It's a really um, complex thought in a very short sentence. But it's true. And the book, of course, is, fuck, is, is fiction, but it does a great job illustrating what could happen with these kind of thoughts and where these kind of thoughts lead us, they eventually lead us to thought police, which frankly, I'm scared about how close we are to thought police. But think about this and how it applies to postmodernists. They're basically telling you, whoa, history is subjective. That's their attempt. That's their attempt right there to control history. Because if you can now say that everything in history is subjective, you can now control history as, as a postmodernist. So when I argue a fact to a postmodernist, such as identity politics led us to um, 1919 Russia, uh, where millions of Ukrainians end up starving in the 1920s because of identity politics then they can just dismiss this argument out of hand because they don't subscribe to history. They don't subscribe to the authority in which I am citing. This is the same sort of thing that happens if you're a religious person and you make the mistake of arguing to someone who is not religious from the Bible. It doesn't do a lot of good for you. You're not going to make a lot of headway with that person in the argument because they don't subscribe to the authority in which you are citing. So, the problem with postmodernism is it's intellectual terrorists. It's, it's, you're an intellectual terrorist if you're a postmodernist because you've basically broke down all thought, period. There's no reason to think anything anymore. Why do we even bother wasting our time on anything if postmodernists uh, are correct, which they are not? But this is where it all comes from, guys, and I want you to pay attention to the grab here. They're trying to control history, and when I'm going to bring it all back around to the Coca-Cola training. In this training... They're trying to tell you to try to be less white because all whites are racist. Okay, so let's hold that off to, to, uh, to the left over here for a second. They're trying to control history by telling you that everybody that's ever been white is oppressive and currently oppresses people. Well, you can't argue facts with them because they're postmodernist. So they're going to say, well, everything's subjective and it's language and this, that, and it depends on your perspective. And from their perspective, you got to recognize their truth. I'm sure you guys have heard that statement. Let them speak their truth. That's a postmodernist thing. 
Okay. But this statement that we held off to the left, this is how you get them and this is how you break down their arguments every single time. If you are a postmodernist and you are going to argue to me that everything is subjective, you then have to deal with the fact that you can't make a wholesale sweeping statement like all, all white people are racist. From whose point of view? It's subjective. So if they're going to live in that world, they got to they gotta argue from that perspective too. So take heart, guys. You can get these guys in an argument. If you get in an argument, you get in a back and forth with somebody. Just understand where their theories come from. Understand the building blocks that were used to build their foundation. And they built their foundation on sand. And uh, I know that probably not everybody out there in my in my audience is uh, is a Christian, but the, the fable uh, from the Bible that says, don't build your house on, on a beach, build your foundation on, on rock. I think we can all agree, regardless of religion, that that is a wise thing to do. The postmodernists have built their foundation on sand. Allow it to crumble. Allow it to crumble in front of them. It's the only way that we can defeat this kind of thought disease. And that's what postmodernism is. It's intellectual terrorism. Um, and my cousin made a great point this weekend when I said that postmodernism was intellectual terrorism. He came back um, and said that it's actually intellectual slavery. And that sparked an idea with me that I think it, it, it's he's on to something there, but I, I disagree a little. It's not intellectual slavery. It's the tool that they're using to get you into intellectual slavery. They do that by getting you into a situation where they're going to control the language. When they control the language, which is all about what postmodernism is all about, control the language, guys, which is what intersectionality is about. So if they control the language and they get us into quote unquote new speak, uh, which is from the book 1984, then they can tr they truly can control history. They can control the current. They can control the future. Um, they control everything with language. So don't allow it to happen. Say what you want to say, which is why I plead the first is so perfect right now. It's so perfect for us. And we're not going to let them control our language. We're not going to let them control everything in the world. Uh, we welcome people of all different views and, and, and backgrounds and all that stuff. I, I'm all for equality. But you don't get to have uh, a crazy argument like postmodernism and not get called on it. So if you bring that stuff over here, you're going to get called on it. Be warned on that. That being said, everybody's welcome here. So that's uh that's that's where I'm gonna leave it. 23 minutes is plenty long for a Monday video, guys. So it'll be probably 25 minutes by the time I'm done editing. Like, share, subscribe. I know this was a long talk to topic, but it's a complex topic, and honestly, I could probably talk another hour or two on this. Um, we really skimmed the surface on a lot of the ideas that I covered, but hopefully it gives you something to think about and let me know what you guys are thinking. Comment down below, uh, be active on the Facebook page. And I'm looking forward to hearing your guys' thoughts. Thank you so much. Bye. I could really use a change of scenery. Yeah. Everybody's smoking all the greenery. Yeah. Close the match because they were handed down to me. But I'm still fly. I'm still fly. I know. I'm still fly. I'm still fly. Let's go.